and good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining me for this Lunch and Learn. I am your host, Dr. Polly Heil Mealy at Abundant Health and Wellness. Now, we are a holistic clinic located in downtown Humble, Main Street, and Avenue C. Now, today, I want to talk to you about fibromyalgia, and I want to talk to you about some of the causes and what we think may be a nice way to get out of that. Now, uh, fibromyalgia is a state where you are in constant pain. Now, up until a few years ago, the doctors thought that fibromyalgia was just all in your head because there was no blood test that would detect it. But there is a brand new blood test uh, developed in the last few years that will detect your fibromyalgia. So apparently, um, before this, you could have fibromyalgia for probably uh, five to seven years before you would get a diagnosis. And uh, what fibromyalgia is, is chronic nerve pain, and it can be muscle pain. Now, I always thought of this as an autoimmune disease, and I do think that it has some autoimmune factors to it, but it is not classified in the medical literature as an autoimmune disease. So, uh, just wanna uh, break that out for you. Uh, so, uh, it's a good thing that the doctors don't think that it is now a mental disorder and that it's all in your head. I remember growing up, and my grandmother, uh, which I absolutely loved my grandmother, she's been gone and she's with Jesus and has been for about uh, 32 years now. Um, but she, uh, you know, back in that day, there were a lot of nervous uh, conditions and uh, just everything that the doctor couldn't put a label on was labeled your nerves, it's my nerves. And I remember coming out of the bedroom uh, one day and uh, somebody asked me what was wrong and I said, it's my nerves, it's my nerves. And that's because I'd heard my grandmother say that. So it's really good to know that uh, fibromyalgia is not all in your head and what we can do to uh, get some uh, relief from this. So this uh, blood test, was delivered by, uh, delivered, developed by a Dr. Hackshaw, okay, H-A-C-K-S-H-A-W, I guess it's Hackshaw, okay, and uh, you don't need to have gallons and gallons of blood, they can do it with just a uh, one milliliter um, amount, so that's just very, very, very small, and so that's a good thing. So I'm gonna read some information here, and then we can talk about this, all right? This lady had fibromyalgia and she was told by her doctor that she would always have to uh, live with it. And then she heard somebody who gave a testimony somewhere who had fibromyalgia and now no longer does. And she asked her what her approach was and she said she went the holistic method. Well, fancy that, that what the medications cannot do, holistic therapies and good eating and exercise and all that can have a dramatic effect on that. So of course this was not uh, news to me because we practice holistic medicine and we've had really good results with people that have degenerative diseases with pain and that kind of thing. So I was not surprised to hear this. Um, she said that this, this lady that was that's writing this, she said that she took 30 different prescriptions, three zero, 30 different prescriptions every day to help mitigate the pain that she was in and the symptoms barely improved. Now that's just really heartbreaking. So if this is something that you suffer from or you know someone that suffers from this, this is really, really just soul destroying that you're taking all these medications and just nothing is happening. All right, she says, when I turned 40, I was starting to, uh, staring down the barrel of some previously horrible uh, outcomes taking an incredible amount of pain, taking narcotics, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't work, I couldn't function, all right? I couldn't have a baby and I wasn't a very good wife. Well, I guess not if you can't uh, move or sleep or anything. Uh, she said it was very stressful on our marriage. We went from a two income uh, family to a one income family overnight and we nearly went bankrupt with all of the medical bills. So this is just soul destroying physically, emotionally, mentally, and that kind of thing. So anybody out there that's suffering from this, I just wanna give you some hope. 
She said she started praying. Well, fancy that, okay? She said she started praying. She said, um, meditating and praying is not what recovered me, but I think it made me become aware of the possibilities. She said, I met a lady who said she had recovered from fibromyalgia. It was the first time I'd ever heard that, so I started talking to her and listening to her, and I started working with her, and within three weeks, as little as three weeks of doing what she was doing, I felt so much better. She said in the months that followed, she was able to get off all of her prescriptions. She was able to get all of her symptoms totally resolved. She was able to get pregnant, have a baby, and she and her husband are doing oh so much better. Well, I guess so if you're not living in this chronic pain. So she's been symptom free for 11 years. So this isn't just something that is, you know, you may get through this, but then it comes back and regresses. It doesn't have to. I guess if you don't do what you were doing to get rid of the symptoms, then uh, you'll have to uh, maybe have some kind of regression, but hopefully not. Hopefully you feel so much better when you learn how to uh, get rid of this pain that you'll do whatever it takes to get out of pain. I know I'm not a lover of pain, Pain. Anything that I can do to stay pain-free, I'm going to do it. So there you go. Um, fibromyalgia, the actual name, means muscle pain, okay? It is different from other chronic pain conditions like arthritis, and it is not, according to the doctors, an autoimmune disease. We talked about that a few minutes ago, all right? Its best description is amplified pain syndrome. So that's all kinds of pain. That's muscle pain. That's nerve pain. It's all kinds of pain. Okay. So, um, she says that the uh, fibromyalgia targets the nervous system. Well, now as a holistic practitioner, that tells me that there are some viruses involved. Now, I just want to tell you that we all get viruses. Uh, viruses are a way that the uh, body comes into contact with things that are out there in the atmosphere. Uh, the body mounts an immune response. The immune response quells the virus and it strengthens your immune system, okay? So we all come across viruses. 95% of the adult population on the Northern Hemisphere, uh, North America, right, North America here, 95% um, of adults have the Epstein-Barr virus. So odds are you have it. So when you have these viruses, um, the immune system mounts a response and then uh, you have antibodies that come against it. But some of these viruses uh, get on the edge of your nerves. Now I'm going to use my fingers as a kind of a show and tell here. So you've got nerves and you've got axons and dendrites, right? So your nerve impulses goes from this nerve to this nerve and it makes like a little arc. So just think of a little, you know, if I was a spidey, right? Um, that I would, you know, do that and then you've got the spider web going and that's how you get your nervous impulses. Well, we believe that when you have viruses, the viruses sit on the end of your nerves and they over spark. And when they over spark, they burn off the uh, melanin on your nerves. Now, is this exactly how fibromyalgia works? Well, I've never seen it under an electron microscope, so I can't tell you for sure that it works like that, but I believe it works like that. And that's why you have this horrendous pain on the nerves. Now, we know that if you get a herb, a really good herbal tincture of an herb called skull cap. Now you would think with a name like skull cap, this would not be a, a beneficial herb, but I'm just telling you, it will rebuild the myelin sheath on your nerves. So if you have a lot of nerve pain, this is a great, great herb for you, okay? It's probably not the be all and end all, but it is something that will help for nerve pain. So if you've got neuropathy of any kind, if you've got any kind of frayed nerves, and this is something that you would want to do because it helps with the myelin sheath, okay? Um, the prescriptions that they give you for fibromyalgia are antidepressants, serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, and drugs that mod uh, moderate the calcium and sodium flow across the nerve endings, okay? So, uh, 
what it says one common view found among holistic minded practitioners is that fibromyalgia symptoms uh, originally stem from a body overburdened with toxicity and digestive issues. Now, we talk about this, we talk about this. Um, I'm gonna show you, and you've probably seen this before. This is from Thrive in 63. I love my friends at Transformation, okay? And I'm sure they won't mind me showing you this because it's in the book. So here, when you have good digestion, you've got energy, uh, you absorb your nutrients, you've got energy repair, and then you have health. When you have poor digestion, right, you've got toxicity, inflammation, and then you've got imbalance. And you've got all of these sicknesses and diseases, right, because your digestion is at risk. And so we know here in holistic world, we know that digestion is absolutely key. And so most of the holistic practitioners say that people with fibromyalgia have a messed up gut. So this is a really, really good protocol. It's a 63, that's why they say Thrive in 63. It's a 63 day protocol. It's three different phases um, and each phase is 21 days. So we've used this, it's clinically proven, not just by me, but there's a research paper that you can find online. It's clinically proven to do what it says it does and it rebuilds the microbiome. So this is something that's really, really important if you wanna to get to the root of the problem. Now, a lot of times people just wanna be out of pain and I get that, I wanna be out of pain too. You've got to go to the root of the problem, which in most cases can be the gut and overtoxicity. So what is overtoxicity? Well, the body has an eliminative system. Uh, it's got four, actually. So you've got your lungs and your bronchioles. You've got your uh, kidney, your bladder. You've got your large intestine. And then you've got your skin. So all of those systems allow you to detoxify. So you may not know this, but if you would take a dry vegetable bristle brush or a real um, authentic loofah, a natural loofah, not a plastic sponge, not some of those scrubbies, but if you take a natural bristle brush or a natural loofah and you dry brush your skin, if you took the little uh, skin fragments that come off of your skin and you sent those to the lab and you had that analyzed, you know what? The constituents would be the same as urine, right? Now, I know nobody wants to say that. This is why you smell when you get sweaty, right? Because you're sweating out all of those toxins. Well, the body wants everything, most everything, to go through the bowel and through the kidney and bladder. And then, of course, the respiration when you're a deep breather, you get rid of all that carbon dioxide and that kind of thing. Most people don't do that. Most people don't move their bowels two to three times a day. Most people don't get rid of two pounds of urine a day, right? Most people don't sweat. You'd be surprised at how many people come in here and they say they never sweat. Well, that's not a good thing because sweating is a way to detoxify the body. So when we don't detoxify the body, then all of those toxins stay in, get in, and the body has to deal with all of that nastiness and it breaks down different systems in the body so the body can't get well. So you've got your gut that's an issue and you also have your elimination that's an issue. A lot of people think that your gut is elimination but your gut is absorption. So if you're not absorbing your nutrients properly, you're gonna have a breakdown and if you're not eliminating the toxins efficiently, then you're gonna have a breakdown. Okay, so it says um, if you are symptomatic, with fibromyalgia, then your digestive system is damaged, okay? So we don't want your digestive system being damaged. So there's also an antibiotic impact. Almost everybody that they interviewed said that they developed fibromyalgia after they were given a course of antibiotics that included, and I'm gonna say this big word, okay? Uh, fluoroquinolones, right? So there's a class of antibiotics that's very, very strong. Hopefully they're used as a last defense, but with all of our antibiotics being pushed through our food, through our meat, through our milk and our cheese and that kind of thing, 
we are overloaded with antibiotics and therefore that is giving rise to superbugs. And so superbugs need super antibiotics and so the fluoroquinolones are the ones that the doctors use in this case. Now, the most common one is Cipro. So if you had Cipro, right, then you're going to have been exposed to this particular uh, class of antibiotics. And a lot of people say that they developed this um, fibromyalgia after that. In fact, they call it Cipromyalgia. Never heard of that before. So I know that I always um, ask patients not to do the fluoroquinolones. Uh, you can Google that and there's several different uh, there's several different uh, prescriptions that come up. Um, and people always call me and they say, well, I've got this, I'm at my doctor and he says he wants me to take XYZ antibiotic. And I'll say, if you think you need an antibiotic, then that's fine. Just ask the doctor to please not give you a fluoroquinolone unless it's the only thing that's going to work for you. In some cases, that is the only thing. But just be aware, if you take those antibiotics, it's very, very possible that you will develop the um, fibromyalgia, okay? So, uh, they say uh, about the fluoroquinolones, uh, they say in 19, uh, sorry, 2016, the Food and Drug Administration warned that the side effects of these medications outweighed the benefits when it comes to simple infections. Fluoroquinolone toxicity advocate and cipromyalgia sufferer, Mark Gerard, believes that he has paid a high price for doctors administering these painful drugs irresponsibly. He says, fluoroquinolones are incredibly toxic, yet doctors hand them out like candy. And worse yet, they double the dose or triple the duration on a whim as if they were traditional antibiotics. They are also prescribing them in conjunction with other drugs that cause toxic reactions in the bodies. My doctor did all three. I have suffered horribly with a wide variety of health problems from head to toe. So this is really, really difficult. And uh, I would just tell you, we have people that, have, that come in have been very, very damaged by their doctors. Now, am I doctor bashing? No, I'm not doctor bashing. I'm just saying there are things that happen. But the good news is if you give your body the right nutrients, then the body is able to recover, the body is able to do what it needs to do so that you can uh, go back. Remember, health is a continuum. You can go this way over into disease or you can go this way over into health. It's all what you do. It's who you uh, love, what you think, how you live, what you eat. All of those things determine the quality of health that you have. Even if you've been severely damaged, right, you can get your body to go back to a healthy state, but it's going to take more if you've been damaged. It's going to take a lot of concentration on your food. It's going to take a lot of concentration on good nutritional supplements to fill up those deficiencies. You may not uh, be absorbing your nutrients, so we need to work on that end, or you may not be uh, getting rid of your uh, toxins, so we need to work on that end, no pun intended. Now, we've been talking a lot about, in the last few weeks, about this GX Sciences. I love this. So, I told you, I've been telling you that we have the big, big panel that Steve and I did, and we're finding out uh, what genetic SNPs we have, SNP, and that stands for Single Nucleotide Polymorphism. And what that means is, is your gene complete? Is it half broken or is it totally broken? Just because your gene is broken doesn't mean you have to have the bad um, effects of that if you take the nutrients you need to turn that broken gene off. Okay, and this is something that we're getting more and more into because we can be doing all the right things, giving you all the right supplements, giving you the high quality supplements, but they're not working for you because you have a gene SNP that we're not addressing. And that's not something that I can test for with my little equipment here because 
I don't know the right question to ask. So I have not studied the human genome. I'm just going to be honest with you. I haven't, but I've partnered with people that do. So there are two of these tests that you might be interested in. One is for chronic pain. And it's suggested that we do this one for people that have fibromyalgia. Now, I'll just tell you, if you call and you mention the uh, broadcast today, that we'll give you a special deal on that. Uh, there's also a DNA um, test that you can do that is just checking the detoxification genes. Are you able to detoxify? If not, then there are some things that we can do to help you with that, but only if we know what your gene mutations are. So we've got these new resources, and again, they're not all that expensive. They're both, uh, both of these tests are under $300, and if you call and you mention that you wanna take these because you've seen this uh, video, then we'll give you even a better discount on that. So. Um, these are some things that if you are really, really serious about your health, we can do this as a first resort or we can try some different nutritional things and see how you respond. And if you're not responding, then we can do this gene testing to see where you are. Nobody has to suffer. Nobody has to suffer in silence. And that's, that's what we want to make sure. All right. So the final thing I want to talk about is exercise. Now, you might be saying that um, I cannot exercise. Oh, mom, thanks. <laughs> mom just sent me a text message. Thanks, mom. Um, you might be thinking that with your body being so tired and your body being uh, so much in pain that you are not going to want to exercise because it hurts to breathe, okay? But the experts all say that if you exercise, that movement moves the length it moves the joints and it helps the detoxification process. And so I just want to encourage you, even if you are in a lot of pain, if you'll do some gentle walking, if you'll do some uh, maybe just a little nice bouncing on a little rebounder, one of those little round trampolines that we can have in our home, that really, really moves the lymph. And I happen to know someone who had a sister who had a immune disease. It was an autoimmune disease, if I remember correctly. Correctly. And she did the rebounder three minutes, two or three times a day. And within just a very few weeks, that disease left her body. So these are some things that you can do even if you hurt, but it gets everything moving in the right direction. So we want to be able to do that. So it says, a healthy body wants to move. It's part of how we are designed. But when you're overloaded with toxins, and you start to detoxify without a way to get the toxins out, then you're going to get sicker. So this is a really good point. So one of the things we do in the clinic, we always make sure before we start a detoxification program that we make sure that you're moving your bowels two to three times a day, every day, okay? So we know how to do that. Once that's happening, then we're gonna make sure that you're absorbing all of your nutrients so that you get the benefit, not only of the food that you eat, but also the nutrients that we give you in the form of supplements. So hopefully, uh, we've given you a lot of hope. If you have fibromyalgia out there, uh, you can get rid of all the toxicity, you can get your digestive system restored. Remember, traumatic events also cause your immune system to break down. So be careful of the negativity in the world. Be careful of the drama. Don't surround yourself with people that are always causing drama. So if you think that this would help you, then you can come and see us. You can request these DNA kits or you can request an appointment and we'll help you with that. There is no one size fits all, although the uh, Thrive in 63 is really, really good. It's a good first step. Even if you don't want to come and see me for an appointment, if you want to come and do this protocol, this is a great first step. So, people write to me all the time and they want to know what my favorite things are. All right, so today I'm going to share with you suja, suja juice, right? So, you know, if you come and see us, we give you a little packet to take home. And one of the things that we recommend that you do is you do green juice or green drink. Now, 
we're, we're conditioned from fourth grade when we do those little science projects that anything green in the refrigerator is nasty and we need to throw it out because it's spoiled, right? So this is green. Nobody likes looking at green. I mean, I'm just going to tell you and be honest with you. But this is really good. It is not from Texas, sadly. There is a company that I like but they're hard to find. It's called Daily Grains, and they make their juice um, from uh, Austin, Austin, Texas. And I love them, but they're hard for me to find. The good thing about them is a, a bottle gives you four and a half pounds of green vegetables in every bottle, and they don't taste bad at all. This is one that is more easily found. Um, I think I found this at Kroger. I know Target has it, and it's called Suja organic. It's cold pressed. Let me tell you what it has in there. It's got apple, banana, mango, spinach, spirulina, kale. I know nobody likes kale. Uh, lemon, chlorella. Now chlorella is good. Why? Chlorella is good for heavy metal detoxification. And barley grass. So this has no preservatives, no added sugars. Uh, it is vegan. So if that matters to you, uh, I like it. It tastes really, really good. So if you're trying to add more greens in your diet, the thing I don't like about this is it doesn't tell you uh, how much greens you're getting, okay? It just doesn't tell you. It says it is a fruit and vegetable juice smoothie. That's what it says. But it doesn't tell you how much you're actually getting, where the daily greens tell you you're getting four and a half pounds of greens, which makes me feel really good about the amount of greens that I'm getting into my system. So hopefully you've learned a lot and it is the first weekend in May. So be good to yourself, get some rest, get some downtime, be sure and uh, think about sharing this with people that you know that have fibromyalgia. We've got some really good, uh, we've got some good techniques, we've got some good resources, and I believe we can make you feel better. So this is me signing out for the weekend. I'll see you next Friday here at noon. Take care. Love you bunches. Bye-bye.